Coming to this museum for the first time is worth the trip in itself, regardless of this race. I wish I would have come here a lot sooner. Um, it's amazing for me walking around this morning, I realized that so much um, flight innovation has come out of the United States Air Force. It's one of the leading uh, innovators for flight period ever, period. And that's an unbelievable thing to recognize. Looking around, and this, this is one of four or more gigantic hangars that are Tetris full of incredible planes. And like, there's one over us right now. I've never seen that thing. I had no idea that existed. Uh, but that's an incredible part of the story of the innovation of aviation. And uh, it's an honor to be here. The other thing that I find amazing is I, I know that some people say, Jesse, are you a, a real pilot or a drone pilot? And sometimes I don't know how to feel about that, but um, I consider all these pilots to be real pilots. And I consider some of the minds that are here operating these little tiny aircraft might be the greatest minds that have ever operated an aircraft before. Uh, the skill level that you'll see at this race in particular is some of the top minds on the planet uh, flying anything, in my opinion. My dad bought me a tiny drone when I was, well, many years ago, I guess almost a decade ago, and I just flew it so much, and then just line of sight, no goggles yet, this is before FPV. I destroyed that thing, and then I went through 10 more of these little $50 drones. Uh, and then I found out FPV existed, and everybody was doing it on these larger drones, but me and a bunch of pilots that were traveling to races around 2015, 2016, uh, decided we wanted to FPV these little tiny drones. Uh, at, that, at that time, I was a member of a drone racing team called Big Whoop, and we decided to call these little drones Tiny Whoops, and that's how that whole thing started. And it just caught on like wildfire, wildfire partly because all of my friends that helped me develop the idea were sort of community leaders around the country and sometimes around the world. So they'd go home and tell their entire local community about Tiny Whoop, and that just made it really start to snowball. That's incredible. I'm based out of Fort Collins, Colorado. Tiny Whip headquarters is in Loveland, Colorado, on the Front Range, about an hour north of Denver. And uh, yeah, the Tiny Whip idea started in Colorado and traveled to a bunch of different drone houses that were happening at events 2015, 2016, and of course onward up until today. Tiny Whoop has had a huge advantage for a lot of reasons. First of all, it's the safest drone in the world. It's also incredibly accessible. It's cheap. It's really easy to get into compared to bigger drones. And it can give you the completely immersive gift of flight. And that's what people are falling in love with. It's, it does feel, once you get used to the controls, which takes a little bit of time to get over a learning curve, but then, you know, it becomes second nature and it almost feels like you were always meant to fly. And that does want you, make you want to try to get into a career where you can exercise that gift that, that feels so natural now. So yeah, people are coming out of Tiny Whoop and going into real estate photography. They're going into nature photography. Uh, one of my favorite Tiny Whoop pilots just got done filming with David Attenborough for the BBC. Um, the very first pilot I ever sponsored, Jordan Temkin, went on to win the Drone Racing League two years in a row, and now he's working with all kinds of uh, documentary companies filming in the mountains, and it's a, it's a perfect place to start if you're interested in getting into drones. Normal body movement and gravity will do the rest. And maybe their hand. <laughs> <laughs>